And uh, I will, for the coming 25 minutes or so, give you my view upon why the answer is not the traditional predefined progression, but rather to create the passionate and high performing ski and ride experience through what we call a will, skill, and hill approach. That is what I will go through for you guys in the coming 25 minutes. And there were really fine words from, from Shell about me founding a lot of companies, etc. But this is what I like to be presented as. I am a passionate skier. And that's what I actually do, no matter what it says on my business card. For the coming 20 minutes, we will go through why one should use a will, skill, and hill approach. And once we know why, you can ask yourself, what is it really? What's the fundamentals of will, skill, and hill? And sum it up with how can we use this when we're out there in the slopes, with our groups, with our private lessons. Let's move into the question, why? Let's move back to the first question. What really differs the best from the good? Well, whenever I educate ski instructors, which I have the fortune to do quite often, I ask them this question, because it is, is a quite an interesting question. And I get a bunch of answers, because this is a very complex question, right? And there are so many answers to this question. And here are a few examples. People tend to start talking quite a lot about how you should be a very good skier or boarder how you should know the mechanics, how you should know the rotary movements or the edging movements or the, the, the force pressure, et cetera, et cetera. And these are all really important stuff. And then some you know, students start to mention the pedagogics, the communication, maybe moving a little bit into what we call leadership ability. And lately, for the last four or five years, I would say, people start talking about, well, let's look a little bit deeper into the customer experience. Maybe that could be important as well. Well, here's the thing. All these things are, please, very important. And they're extremely important for us to become good ski instructors. We need to be good skiers. We need to be good analyzers. We need to be, have good communication skills, good leaders, knowing what the customer wants. However, this is not enough. Because everyone is getting so good that these are turning into hygiene factors. Because if everyone knows this, how should you then do to become the best? If you do like everyone else, you're obviously not going to be the best. You're going to be good, but not the best. So what then differs, according to me and to the, the research that we've been doing for some time now, what differs the best from the good? There's a little bit too large of an audience to ask that question, right? No one's going to answer it. Well, here's my view on it. This is the only thing that will differ the very best from the good, the ability to create and sustain skiing and boarding passion. If you don't have the passion, you're not going to reach anywhere. But if you're able to create passion and you're able to sustain that passion among your, your, your guests, your clients, your students, well, they will not only have fun, but they will also learn a lot. So if you manage to do this, and this has been quite a subject this week, I would say, starting off with a very motivational uh, lecture about uh, passion and motivation. And, and I've heard quite a lot of people talking about this, which, which makes me very happy. But not so many people has actually talked about how do you then do this? How do you create and sustain skiing and boarding passion? Well, some people have told me, well, you know, passion is not everything. But I will bet that even if you just want to you know, become a racer, if you want to be the top performer, the top racer in the world, you would never put that margin effort into your work if you do not have the passion for what you're doing. I promise you that you will never do such a stupid thing as I did, that jump out of a cliff and do a fr front flip if you're not passionate about what you're doing. But the passion is not only within competitiveness and within freestyle or free ride, the passion is as much or maybe even bigger when you see people like this. The best way to get children to start skiing and to enjoy skiing and to sustain skiers will be to make sure that they are passionate about what they are doing. 
right? Okay, if that is true, if passion is the key, how do we then go further? What kind of insights do we need in order to actually use this to become the best ski instructors of the world? Well, first of all, I think you need to realize that passion is something very personal. Like, no one else can tell you that you had had a passionate experience. Come on, David, you, today was good, right? Yeah, I might have a good case experience, right? No ski instructor can tell the group if they were passionate or not. Only the single individual in that group could tell you if he or she was passionate about anything. So passionate is, by default, individual. And if it's individual, well, then everything we do needs to be skier and rider centric, right? Everything needs to start with the specific skier. You cannot really read from a book that you should go from A to B to C to D to E because that will not create the passionate experience because it's not going to be personal. Because everything starts and ends with the skier or the boarder. Every single person, every group, every day, every week, every slope will need a specific progression or a specific approach. Which is kind of complicated for us. Because it, it, it puts much higher pressure on what we should do, I would say. Well, if everyone believes that you need to be ski-centric or rider-centric, well, here's what comes next then. Because if that is true, everything we need and all the analysis and all the decisions we make need to be conducted in real time. Because how would you know what to do on a lesson if you don't know what the skier wants? How would you know how to you know, conduct an analysis of a skier if you, didn't want, if you don't know if that skier wants to ski moguls or GS turns or whatever? You can never move into technology or technique if you don't know what the skier wants. And if you need that information, that information is not only going to come to you at that very time. So I'm not saying that we should stop planning our lessons, obviously, that would be a big mistake, but I'm saying that we need to be adaptive. Because, and the more we plan, the easier it is to yes, move out of the plan. So what I'm saying is that the progression to take a ski from A to B to C to D, well, that will not be the way of doing it. Because if a skier is good enough to jump B and C, why do it? Or if the ski don't want to do A, why is it? Skip it. Because if you, you keep forcing skiers and guests to do things they don't want to do, well, they will definitely not be passionate about the skiing. And they will definitely not come back for more. Well, here's the thing. If we believe that you need to take real-time decisions, then our profession starts to be a little bit more complicated. And we've seen in Sweden that actually instructors start working like this after three, four, five, maybe six years. And the problem for us is that the average time of being a ski instructor is 3.5 years. So once they start to get really good, they quit. So the aim for us is to find the model or concept or an explanation how they can start acting like this much sooner. Because all the great ski instructors in the world, I think, already do this. But no one has really put any words or any structure or any methodology into acting in this way. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. To put a model for you guys in order to actually be able to work like this much earlier in a ski instructor profession. The purpose of what we then call the will, skill, hill approach is obviously then to be able to create a passionate and high performance skiing and riding experience through what we call the personalized progression. That is the aim of this model. And I think simplicity is beautiful. So we will try to do this as simple as as straightforward as possible because then people can adapt to it much, much easier. So here, my friends, is the answer. It's not more complicated than this. Well, it could be and it will be quite soon. But as a first glance, what we do and what we believe in is that you always need to start with the skiers will. If you don't know if the skiers want to go north face, moguls, GS turns, slope style or whatever, how would you possibly know what to do? If you don't know what the skier is aiming for and what the skier's goals are, 
how will you possibly know what to do as a ski instructor? Once you know that, you can move in to the skill. If you know the skill, the ski you want, or the rider wants, then you can ask yourself, what are they capable of? And once you know what they're capable of, and, and the difference, maybe the differentiation between the will and the skill, well, you need to take into consideration the hill you're at. And the hill is not only the mountain itself, but it's in the whole context. What's the arena? What's the external preconditions, right? The day is going to look totally different if you have a totally icy slope or one meter fresh powder, right? You definitely need to take that into consideration as well. So looking at this in a very simple way, this would be the answer. You need to take the, both the will, the skill, and the hill into consideration in order to define a personalized progression. Well, let's dig a little bit deeper into this. Let's move into will. What the real will is about? Well, it's both the expectations that the skiers or the guests have. You know, they pr probably have a lot of prejudgments when it comes to ski schools, etc. So what are the expectations? Secondly, you need to know what the preferences are. What do the skier actually want to do? And thirdly, you need to know his or her goals or dreams. Because if we make them getting closer to the dreams, boom, then you make, you're going to be sure they are quite passionate about what they're doing. Moving from will into more detail on the skill. Well, I'm not saying that we don't care about the technical skills. And I've been quite speaking around quite a lot with different countries, and it seems like we are quite agreed on that you know, the technical skills is quite easily divided into the rotary movements, the edge control movements, the pressure control movements, and we added the balancing movements. But these things will not work as a tool if you don't know what the rider or the skier wants. Once you know what he or she wants, then you can start working with the technic analysis, for example. But these are not only the technical skills, but also the physical skills. Obviously, I would have a totally different progression if I work with a beginner that used to be a professional hockey player or a beginner that used to be my grandfather. Like, there you have totally different strength, coordination, fitness, movability. And I heard that there was a 50-plus workshop today that I suppose was really good. You know, then you take it into consideration also the physics, right? Thirdly, the hill. Well, obviously, you need to take into consideration the external conditions, such as weather, terrain, and equipment. At the Austrian um, presentation this morning, we spoke quite a bit about the new uh, equipment and what that makes you want to do with uh, skiing. And it's a whole different story if you have a group with a 10-meter or a 25-meter radius on the ski. Well, secondly, you need to think take into consideration the context. And you can divide this into the static and the dynamic context. The static context, we can't do much about. Because here you have a setup. Either you have a group or a private lesson, or you have a ski instructor education, or what you have. But what you can do a lot about is the dynamic context. Because the dynamic context, here's where you're actually able to act. Here's a ski instructor taking the personal skill, the personal will, and the external environment into consideration. Here's where you can start acting to design the personal progression. Here's where you can make all the changes. And think about it, this is actually the only thing you can do. Because the personal uh, progression will also include the ex exercises you choose to do, the, the slopes you, you choose to ride in, or whenever you want to go for a coffee. So here is where you can act. But the thing is that this is quite still quite straightforward. But when you start to understand that all these three areas are interdependent, it's starting to get very complicated. Because every time you change any of these areas, the other two will change as well. So I think the big movement is not to start doing this, but to doing this all the time. Because the easy way of doing this is to have a group, and they, they come to you in the morning and you say, all right, what do you want? How good are you? Where do you want to ski? Let's go. Boom. And then you conduct a kind of a very small will skill hill analysis. But if you want to do this in the real way, 
you need to conduct this every run, or even in the middle of the run. Because what will happen if you take a group, not so advanced skiers, to a very steep slope? Well, you take them to a hill. You take them to a hill that is a little bit too advanced for them, right? Well, most of the time people th start thinking, well, their skills are not good enough. Well, I would say the first that happens in a moment like that is that they will go down drastically. I don't want to ski down here. This is too steep. And what happens with your skills if you get scared? Well, you start leaning backwards, you get stiff, so your skills actually decrease because you will decrease because you chose the wrong hill. But if you somehow make them to overcome that fear and you actually run down that hill, all of a sudden, being down at the valley again, the will is going to explode. And the next round might want to have a positive effect on their skill. So these are interdependent and they work together all the time. And it's actually the case that they not only work together, they strongly enforce each other. Because if you look upon this as a as a whole system, right? And a closed system, like an ecosystem. As long as you get the will going in a good way. So I really want to do this run, I'm so pumped up. <laughs> right, the skills can improve. And if the skills improve, you're going to take that hill much better. And if you take that hill much better, what's going to happen with the will? Well, it's going to improve even more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these three areas worked in the right way are enforcing each other. However, the bad part with this is that they also can work against each other. Because if you have a good will, you have a good skill, but you, you choose to go in a boring slope, well then, all of a sudden, the hill is going to start moving in the other direction, which is going to decrease the skill and decrease the will. So looking at upon this as the first time, it might look very simple and straightforward, which I'm happy if it does, but once you start working with this and peel the onion shell by shell, you get start to realize that it is quite complicated. But as you find the right recipe of using your will, skill, hill methodology, you will also find the key to actually become one of the best, I would say. All right. How then to do this in real life? Not only nice slides and a presentation for 30 minutes. How will you actually do this out there? Well, a few advices on the way. First of all, you always need to be context dependent. Right? You need to apply this on your unique situation. Obviously, the approach can differ if you have a private lesson or a group, or if you're in St. Anton or back in my home slope called Flotsbro, which is like this big in Stockholm. Obviously, the conditions and the, and the context is, will differ, and you need to act accordingly. You definitely need to be sky, skier and rider-centric, right? Everything, and I mean everything you do, starts and ends with the skier. And if you think it starts and ends with the skier, and it starts and ends with their will, skill, and heel, here's quite an interesting insight. Because if you strongly believe that, your specific skier could almost never do any mistakes. Because if they do the best they can from their will, their skill, and the hill, well, you're the one who actually made the mistake. So instead of correcting mistakes, find the right hill in order to make that skier better and for that skill and will to improve. And thirdly, when it comes to be ski-centric, don't hesitate to visit your skiers or riders' culture. There's been quite a lot of new school coming into the skiing, and you will never be able to do a will skill hill analysis or have a, you know, use a will skill hill approach if you don't speak the language, if you don't understand the culture, if you don't want to be part of your client's culture. Because then you're going to be outside of this biosystem and you're never going to step into it. You need to step into the system in order to affect it. And that's one of the keys. Thirdly, well, you need to be moment-centric. By that I mean, obviously, to take all your decisions in real time. If any factor changes from your plan, change the plan. And again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a plan. Have a very good plan, because if you have a good plan, it's easier to change it. 
This is a really good advice, I think. Start to ask questions. Questions is such a great tool. Because if you don't ask questions, how would you ever know what the skier wants, what the skier's will is? And you know, the easy question is to ask, what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of this, of this hour or this day? And you will always get the answer. Well, I want to become a better skier, right? 95% of the time they say, I want to become a better skier. Or I want you to correct my mistakes. Well, then you need to keep asking questions. Because that answer is not good enough to design a personal progression. Because that, that answer doesn't decide what that guy dreams of. Why does he or she want to be a better skier? What's the dream? How can you get closer to the dream? And if you get closer to the dream, you will get closer to the passion. And finally, you need to create an arena. And I'm not saying that everyone should bring shovels and start building when you go out there having their lessons or their groups. But, you know, sometimes it's part of the building arena to shape the kick or whatever. But sometimes it's just, you know, to build the right atmosphere to get a 50-year-old beginner to get the courage to start carving. That's an arena as well. You know, the way you talk, the way you act, when you stop for coffee, etc., etc., will be your arena. And the arena will decide whether or not that that person will be open-minded for new information and new skills. All right. So knowing that, then using the methodology in real life, this is what you need to do. First of all, you need to discover then what's the will, what's the skill, and what's the hill. Once you discover that, you need to discover that for real by asking questions. Get, a, get the dialogue going. Once you know that, then you can invent. Then you can formulate your personal progression, the right progression to create the passion for that skier to get that ski to become better if that is what he or she dreams about. Once you invent, you can perform. Then you can present, then you can do it. It might be, you know, the conclusion is to do that specific exercise obviously in that slope. Then you'll do it, obviously. But the most important thing with this picture, that's gone right now, but soon it's going to get back, is the circle. This is an ongoing process. This is something you do before the run, during the run, and after the run, all the time. Because every run is going to affect the wheel, skill, and hill of that skier. All right. Is wheel, skill, and hill the only answer to become the best? Obviously not. That would be a very bold, right? Obviously not. This is a theory, a methodology that still is under development. But we've been enjoying developing it quite a lot. So that's why we want to share it with you guys. And we will also would like to invite all of you guys to be part of this development because we strongly believe in this. And I hope I kind of get, got you interested as well. So on Thursday, we're going to have our workshops, both in how we use the Wheel Skill Hill in terms of recruiting new skiers, developing the skiers, and the methodology itself. So we're going to have five different workshops looking at this in different angles. And we're going to be very open-minded for your ideas, your suggestions, your critique whatsoever, because this is under development and it will be done during the next six or 12 months or so. And there's also one thing that one should remember, you know, it's not only the Wheel Skill Hill that will decide if you will get that group smiling from ear to ear. Obviously also what in showbiz called the it factor will affect this, right? Why is that some people become stars and some doesn't? Well, most of it boils down to the it factor. Here's the thing, I strongly believe that everyone in this room of 1,500 people do have their own it factor. You just need to find it, and once you know what your it factor is, use it. And use it together with the Will Skill Hill approach, and the boom. You're going to be there. You're going to have a good precondition to become the best, I would say. All right, time flies when you're having fun, so let me try to conclude this a bit. First of all, I strongly believe that the best instructors have the ability to create and sustain skiing and riding a passion, and that's what it all comes down, come down to. And if you believe that, well, I think you also agree that the only way to create passion is to have personalized experiences, as passion is by default personal, right? 
And if you believe that, well, I'm telling you, after trying this quite some time now, that the will, skill, and hill approach will give you a good tool to try to create passion out there in your countries, so we together can make sure that this sport's going to explode even further and become bigger and bigger, and we can have bigger and bigger events, and we can ski more and more. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you, David. Uh, as I said, he will shake your heads a little. Tomorrow we will shake, or some Thursday we will shake your legs out there. Uh, we have a little break now, short break. And